Running on sexually empty is a dangerous way to live in any marriage. So we're going to try to help fill up your love tank. So let's fill her up. How about that? Let's, you know what, let's, let's just do it. Okay? <laughs> and that happens. What a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to be one of your favorite things. It's Absolutely. a Nike slogan. Just do it. I know people are amazed that I say just do it, but I do for a very good reason. I wish I had a dollar for each time someone in my practice said to me, you know, Michelle, when my spouse approached me, I really wasn't in the mood. But once we got into it, I really got yes. into it. It was great. Mm -hmm. I had a good time. We felt connected. It was wonderful. And you know, there's some exciting research that really suggests that for about half the population, and not split along gender lines. Right. They really have to get physically stimulated before they realize this is a good thing to do. I'm enjoying this. In fact, one man in my practice said to me, I wish my wife would just write on her hand, I like sex, so she remembers it for the next uh, time. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, one of my friends who's a therapist, uh, this lady came in complaining, my husband wants so much, he's just never enough sex. So he said, let's try something. Right along your lines, just do it. I said, I dare you to give him sex every night for a week and see what happens. She came back a week later and she said, it only went to day five, and he was fine with that. And he's so <laughs> kind and he's so happy. He, we just had a great thing going. And it's, it's interesting how it turned around. Absolutely. Right? Because Absolutely. she was, oh, he was so much like this, and, and turned around. All of a sudden, he now is happy, smiling, encouraging friendship. Because like you said earlier, as the guy gets that need met, he's ready to meet all the other relational needs. Because this isn't they're rocket opposite. science, it really isn't. When one person is pleased the way they like to be pleased, they're much more likely to be kind and loving. And to show that. And that in the other person's way of showing love, exactly. And you talked about the key being empathy, which in some mm. ways, even though she didn't feel like it, that's kind of what she did. At Absolutely. least she acted as if she was in his shoes. Well, let me tell you a little story about a, a couple in my practice. They were married 15 years or so. And he said, you know, there really is only a two hour window of opportunity on Friday nights between 10 and 12 when she might be interested. Uh -huh. And she started, like you, he she started to laugh. He, he, she <laughs> started to laugh. Nine o'clock, get home. But okay. I got serious and I said to him, you know, tell me what that's been like for you. And he finally got honest with her. And you know what he said? You know, when I lay in bed and you go to sleep and I hear you breathing, all I can tell you is that I'm wondering, do you love me? Are you attracted to me? And there's no lonelier feeling in the world than lying next to you in bed and not feeling connected to you. Wow. And to this woman's credit, her eyes started to fill up with tears and she reached out and grabbed his hand. And you know what she said to him? You know, for 15 years, every time you touch me, I never think what it's like to be in your shoes. I only think of myself. Right. And I am so sorry. And he started to cry and I started oh. to cry <laughs> and she promised him that she would really work harder at it. That's the kind of empathy that needs to happen in relationships. And, and the beautiful thing about filling that void, I mean, it, because when that happens, and, and, and look, at whether we're talking about the person who has the low desire, the high desire, it, it is a problem that you have to share together. Okay, it's our problem, right? right? So let's don't get into blames. Let's don't get into all that stuff, right? I call it boosting the marriage libido. It's not one person's libido. It's, it's the, the relationship. relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Let's take it to the extreme. Are we telling people to roll over and play dead? Are we saying that literally your spouse can come in and say five times a day, I want you ready now? No, there's a flip side to things. I think people with um, high desire have to also understand that people are wired differently. Yes. And that it is really a matter of compromise. You know, when two people get married, they talk about how where they're going to live, whether they're going to have kids, whether they're going to be a one or two career family. But interestingly, missing from that conversation is how are we going to yes. run our sex lives? Yeah. There needs to be compromise. There needs to be understanding that it's it's not always going to be one person's way. Okay, now I'm a, I'll be a little vulnerable here. When I was in our early years of married, marriage, I would have called myself low desire, okay? And, but here's something, I, and nobody taught me this, but this was what was going on in my head, was that if I kept engaging in sex every time I didn't feel like it, I would start associating almost like a bitterness or kind of an anger towards it. And I thought, well, that's not good either because I don't want you know, to make that kind of an association. Right. Okay, does that have any psychological basis whatsoever or was that just out to lunch? That's perfectly understandable, but there really does need to be give and take. And very often, there's another thing that really could be considered. If you're not in the mood for sex, but your partner is, 
Give the gift There's of love. Lot There's of a lot of stuff, of stuff going do. on. That's right. And it isn't a matter of rolling over and playing dead. It really is a matter of caring and loving and giving. And it's really important if you're going to have a healthy relationship develop out of some of these hurdles that you've got to address some of the serious issues. If there's emotional and relational issues between you, i.e. the fights and the, and the arguments and, you know, I mean, we've all been through tough times in our marriages, right? And it's kind of, oh yeah, we're going to jump in the sack, get over it. And he's thinking that's a good idea. She's thinking like the day hell freezes over, right? <laughs> and, and so, and so, so we've, we've got to respect the journey that we're on in the relationship, not just think only sexual as well, that's right? That's right. And you know, sometimes it's not as simple as just doing it. That's right. Because as you're pointing out, there are deeper underlying problems. But here's the good news. Whether the causes are biological, relational, or it, or personal, yes. with what we now know about helping people boost their sexual desire, there is no one who wants a, a more robust sex life that can't have it. We really, there's help out there. People yes. can learn what they need to learn to and get Michelle, help. And Michelle, you are part of the help. Wow. And Thanks. how we thank you yes. for research, wow. for writing in this area, and exposing such private pain for people's marriages. Thank you, Christine. Are we not thankful yes. for that? some fun time where we just do more of the show show that you never see um, on screen. Come back. We've got the bottom line.